prices and the threat of peak oil are changing how everyone thinks about travel. And no one's immune, especially not the U.S. Air Force, which uses about as much jet fuel as a large airline. But unlike most airlines, the Air Force has been testing alternative fuels and aggressively certifying their aircraft to fly on new sources of fuel. The rise in jet fuel prices, besides making a lot of airlines bankrupt, the, the Air Force has also had to deal with it. We were paying 91 cents a gallon for jet fuel in 2004. We've been paying $3.04 and we know that's going to go up. At the Air Force Research Lab, a dedicated engineering staff is studying samples of synthetic jet fuels made from natural gas, coal, algae, and other sources. They want to know how they measure up when compared with the conventional kerosene-based fuels that the Air Force has always used. We kind of act as fuel shipping central here at Wright Pat, so we have samples of all the various alternative fuels and we store them here and then when a university or a company might need five gallons. It's a rare day that some fuel is not going out of here somewhere all over the country. The centroleum fuel that flew on the B-52, we've got some samples of, say, TS-1, Russian jet fuel, JP-7, the fuel for the SR-71, which doesn't fly anymore. But those small barrels are just the beginning. Hundreds of thousands of gallons of fuel are kept outside in a fuel farm. The goal is to certify all its aircraft to fly on a blend of synthetic fuel by 2011. This isn't just a sandbox kind of operation. So we do, when a company delivers 25,000 gallons of fuel, that's a, a real process. Inside the labs, they're simulating the extreme environments that jet fuels might face when in the air. And then a, a more exotic fuel that might be our first sample made from algae from Arizona or whatever. We'll, we'll do some small scale testing here to look at it to make sure there's no thermal stability issues. And that's how we characterize the thermal instability of the fuel. In the near term, coal-based fuel is most attractive to the Air Force because it taps into the abundant coal reserves in the United States. Some studies say that a large synthetic fuel production facility near a coal mine would be profitable if oil costs at least $61 a barrel. But the method of making it, called the fischer tropsch process, can release a lot of carbon dioxide. And the Air Force is restricted from buying any fuel that has a worse carbon footprint than what it already uses. You have to track the whole life cycle. So especially for things like the coal-based fuel, you have to say, well, what's the carbon footprint of the coal mining and the transportation and the, the refining and the fischer tropsch process? So if we ever want to do this on a large scale, we need to see, well, what is the carbon footprint for algae? Does it make sense? Does it have a production scale? So it's a very active area right now looking at well, what can you make fuel out of, what makes sense, what are the environmental impacts. So yes, their aircraft can fly on synthetic fuels, but the environmental costs and production challenges mean that oil independence is still a long ways off. For IEEE Spectrum, this is Sandra Upson.